Ten years ago, I made a video explaining the collapse of Seven World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. Six years later, I did a much improved update. For the 20th anniversary of 9-11, I'm making my last video on Building 7. I'll start with a review of what happened according to the mainstream engineering explanation, followed by common myths, and finally, frequently asked questions about this unique engineering disaster, which tons of people still believe was a secret controlled demolition. Seven World Trade Center was a 47-story office building built in 1987 on the north side of the World Trade Center complex. Structurally, it was a modern steel building with concrete floor slabs, a type of construction called a tube, which has steel columns around the perimeter as well as in a central core. While the core columns of a tube building support mostly gravity loads, the perimeter columns are tied together into what's called a moment-resisting frame, a rigid exoskeleton that resists lateral movement from shearing forces as well as gravity loads. Building 7 collapsed hours after the Twin Towers. It wasn't hit by a plane. Some people thought the collapse resembled a building being intentionally demolished, and soon conspiracy theories began popping up. But as we'll see, the strength of the moment frame was the thing most responsible for its superficial resemblance to a demolition. The North Tower was about 120 yards away. When it collapsed, burning debris fell onto and into Building 7, igniting office contents. The collapse also damaged the water main feeding Building 7's automatic sprinkler system. With many firefighters having been killed or buried by debris from the twins' collapses, the New York Fire Department made the decision not to try to fight the fire in the evacuated building. The fire department suspected that the building might collapse. See what the white smoke is? You see this thing leaning like this? It's definitely going to pass. There's no way to stop it. So after pulling out their men, they established a safety perimeter. Fires moved through, burning uncontrolled for nearly seven hours. At about 5.20 p.m., the building came down. No one was killed or hurt. It was the first time that a steel building over 24s had collapsed primarily due to fire, although it also sustained serious structural damage from the North Tower collapse. The National Institute of Standards and Technology was tasked with studying what happened and preparing engineering reports. In 2008, the final reports were released. In long fires, steel weakens considerably. It also expands, so connections can break and failures can occur. This is why steel buildings incorporate fire protection insulation to delay these dangerous problems. But no one anticipated the duration of Building 7's fires or the lack of water that would have helped to control them. NIST's best guess for what triggered the disaster was that a long girder got heated to where a connection failed causing a localized collapse of perhaps nine floors. But in a steel building like this, it's critical that all vertical columns are laterally stabilized at every floor to prevent them from undergoing a failure called Euler buckling. According to the NIST hypothesis, the local floor collapse left one of the 24 core columns unsupported and it buckled catastrophically. This started a chain reaction that ended up gutting the entire building. The inside-out destruction is nicely visualized in this physically realistic simulation by Kai Kostak. What remained behind, briefly, was just the hollowed-out moment frame, which was never meant to stand on its own. The perimeter columns buckled near the base, and finally, the exoskeleton came down pretty much together in one piece. Myth 1. The building came down symmetrically into its own footprint. That's impossible from an asymmetrical fire. There's ample evidence that the collapse wasn't symmetrical at all. It started in the interior and progressed from east to west over the course of about eight seconds. Daylight becomes visible through the upper windows. Smoke can be seen getting sucked back into the building. 
the moment frame flexes as a visible wave that moves down the exterior. Then, smoke and dust can be seen pouring out near the base as the internal collapse regresses. If any of the collapse could be called symmetrical, it's only the very last part, and usually that's the only part shown in conspiracy videos. They edit out the part that doesn't look anything like a demolition. It's gone, man. And it didn't come down into its footprint. Parts of Building 7 landed across a four-lane street, destroying this building beyond repair and embedding sections in the nearby Verizon building. Myth 2. The collapse resembled a controlled demolition. It really didn't, other than that the building came down via gravity, which is how demolitions are done anyway. Columns are severed, and gravity does the rest of the job. Actual demolitions are loud. Here's what the collapse of Building 7 sounded like from a similar distance. Myth 3. Building 7 had only a couple of small fires. While these are the best quality pictures of the fires, they only show the north face, the side opposite the one that was hit by burning debris. Nobody was photographing near ground zero. It was a hell zone of debris, dust, and choking smoke and gases. However, we do have one shot of what the south face actually looked like. Firefighters describe the scene. Fire on nearly all floors. Completely involved in fire, all 47 stories. You're hearing this building creak and fully involved in flames. It's like, is it coming down next? Myth 4. It was the first time a steel building collapsed in a fire. False. Many smaller steel buildings have collapsed in fires. And firefighters are trained on how to deal with steel structures, which do much worse in fires than concrete ones. In 2005, Windsor Tower in Madrid, which used both steel and concrete structurally, caught on fire. The upper steel sections practically melted away, leaving the concrete parts. Then, in 2017, another steel-framed tall building collapsed in a fire, this one in Tehran. Demolition believers say that these look nothing like the collapse of Building 7, which is mostly true. But the Tehran building was far older, without tube frame construction, and also far smaller, so its framing didn't need to be anywhere near as robust. Remember, Building 7 had a beast of a moment frame. That's why it looked like it collapsed all at once, rather than falling apart in pieces like the other building. Myth 5. The University of Alaska did a study proving Building 7 could not have collapsed due to fire. Leroy Halsey, an engineer specializing in bridges and cold weather, did a study that was funded through public donations to architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. To help raise funds, that organization announced the study's outcome before it even began. Most of the University of Alaska report is spent refuting the initiation mechanism that NIST proposed, but there are many other ways the collapse could have started due to fires. Two other theories by independent engineering firms are mentioned right in Halsey's report. One of them he didn't even try to refute. So the study's conclusion that fire was ruled out altogether is sensationalized and unscientific. Here are some of the simulations from Halsey's final report. The penthouse falls into the building without causing any damage and stops. Analysis shows that unlike the dynamic NIST simulations, Halsey's are not physically responsive or dynamic. The University of Alaska study has been cited in the engineering literature exactly zero times. Meanwhile, the NIST study, flawed though it may be, has 10 citations. Seven World Trade Center is literally a textbook example of a large modern steel building collapsing due to fire. Myth 6. The owner admitted to pulling the building, which is industry slang for demolition. 
In a sit-down interview, owner Larry Silverstein described how he and the fire chief decided to pull the firefighting out of the building when all hope seemed lost. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. Pull is not industry slang for explosive demolition. Fire Chief Daniel Nigro puts it this way. We don't need to ask permission from the owner, no. When we're in charge of the building, we're in charge, and that decision would be uh, the fire chief and his alone. That's why I would know that there is no conspiracy, because uh, for me to be a part of that would be obscene. And it's, uh, it's a, it disgusts me to even think of it. Years later, insurance companies sued Larry Silverstein over his claim for the collapse. Seems like if he had admitted to insurance fraud on camera, that would have come up in the lawsuit. It didn't. Myth 7. The NIST study was done in secret and was never peer-reviewed. NIST brought in outside experts from a range of organizations, so it was hardly done in secret. And the study was peer-reviewed. Four years after it was released publicly, an updated version was published in the Journal of Structural Engineering. Here is the peer review process that the study went through. It's industry standard. Compare that to Leroy Hulsey's study, which only involved himself and two graduate students. It's 273 degrees C per Kelvin, I believe. Was published only on a website and was never reviewed by independent expert referees. They chose their own so-called peer reviewers. That's not how peer review works. It was a freefall collapse. How is that possible unless all of the support was removed? The support was removed, but we'll get to that in a moment. The claim of freefall collapse is very vague. It's true that points on the roofline of the North Face can be measured to descend with a brief period of freefall acceleration. However, some important nuances here. All measurements have a margin of error. This video is taken in standard definition from a distance of a half a mile. So, freefall acceleration could be measured without anything actually accelerating at 9.81 meters per second squared. Second, even exact freefall acceleration and actual freefall aren't necessarily equivalent. Counterintuitively, the end of this stick accelerates faster than G for a period, even though it's coupled to the surface and not actually falling freely. Third and most important, the freefall acceleration period was preceded by a period of much slower than freefall, which falsifies the claim that all of the support was removed instantaneously. In fact, this was the period when the columns were buckling and their connections were breaking near the base. And apparently this rapid progressive failure took about one and three quarter seconds. The columns were spliced every two stories, so once those connections broke all around the perimeter, the base provided virtually zero resistance relative to the mass above it. To demonstrate how this can happen on a small scale, I crushed an empty soda can with a bucket that was filling up with water. There's a period when the can is failing around the perimeter, and right after that, the top of the can comes straight down one might even say symmetrically. I compared it to an iron hook in actual freefall, and just like in Building 7, a period of freefall acceleration of the top of the can can be measured within the margin of error, with a slower period before and after. Some will argue that there was no bucket of water sitting on top of Building 7, but there kind of was. The upper part of the moment frame, which weighed many thousands of tons, was bearing down on the lower part. This demo would work without a water bucket if you put the can in a centrifuge to scale up the g-forces, or if you had a can that was hundreds of feet tall. What about the thousands of architects and engineers who disagree with the official story? An extremely tiny percentage of the world's engineers signed a petition very few of which are structural engineers, and none of which specialize in tall buildings. As for architects, 
They're aesthetic designers. They aren't trained in structural engineering. There's a remarkably similar website and petition by creationists, but at least that one doesn't include students and interns and even landscape architects, a fire alarm technician, and a dentist. Still, it's worth pointing out that there's never been a demolition professionals for 9-11 truth. Didn't the BBC report that Building 7 fell before it actually fell? Yes. With firefighters clearing the perimeter, the news got out that Building 7 was in danger of collapsing. We are getting some word that uh, one, another building there is, is extremely unstable at this point and that there may be further building collapses. This would be Building 7 is what we're hearing. Reuters misreported that it had actually collapsed, and the BBC repeated that report. We had this statement from Reuters. It came, it came some time after our original inquiries, actually. But what it says is, um, on September the 11th, 2001, Reuters incorrectly reported that one of the buildings at the New York World Trade Center, 7 WTC, had collapsed before it actually did. It was just a mistake, made on probably the single most chaotic day in TV news history. If steel skyscrapers can be burned to the ground like that, Why not just set them on fire when they need to be demolished? That might work for a steel building with no structural concrete. But if it did, there's no way to predict how or where it might collapse. Obviously a problem in an urban setting. Also, it's not a great idea to intentionally fill a city with the toxic fumes and smoke from a skyscraper full of office furniture. In reality, steel skyscrapers are typically demolished piece by piece with cranes, not explosives. I mean, why don't they light wooden houses on fire when they need to be demolished? Weren't explosions heard in the building before it collapsed? Yes, there were reports of explosions. But things explode in large fires. And even small fires. Lots of things in an office building can explode when heated. Also, explosion-like sounds are not necessarily explosions. They can be structural failures. What the hell is it? What's going on here? Or even elevator cables snapping. But isn't there a video showing actual explosions? Yes, there is. A hoax that I myself made in 2011 to test the critical thinking of demolition believers. In addition to flashes and explosion sounds taken from real demolitions, I added a flying saucer and made the building collapse even faster than the real one. Many people fell for it. There can be no doubt that we are witnessing explosive detonations immediately prior to the collapse of the mere 50-story structure. It fooled a state legislator, this dumb website fell for it, and 10 years later, people are still sending it to me as proof. Okay, but can you make a video explaining... No. But here's everything else about Building 7 explained. 